Hi everyone, uh, it's good to be here, good morning. Um, so today I'm wearing my uh, VFX reference platform hat uh, and actually specifically talking about, um, uh, let me see if this clicker working. Yeah, it's going, it's not exactly, there we go. Specifically representing the VFX Linux task force and I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today um, is uh, some, some history about the use of Linux in visual effects and animation community. Uh, the CentOS challenge, I'll explain a bit what that is and that's something we're all dealing with right now. Um, a bit about why Linux, why this is even a thing that we're talking about here at SIGGRAPH. Uh, as I say, I'll explain what the VFX Linux task force is. Um, we'll talk a bit about Linux distributions and which distribution we should be using. Uh, and then more about the longer term opportunity, you know, more about the future of Linux on, on professional artists' desktops. And some of you may have seen a, a preview of uh, some of this presentation at the VFX reference platform, Birds of a Feather, last week. Um, you have, don't worry, you haven't seen all of it before. This, there, there, there's, a, there's some extra bits at the end here that you, that you haven't seen yet. So, um, so specifically, you know, we want, let's take a step back first and talk about like, what are our goals? It is, uh, what we're trying to achieve here is to build and sustain a healthy alternative to Windows and Mac OS, optimized for artists and studio environments. We wanna in increase the ease of adoption uh, of Linux by both studios and software vendors. Uh, and we wanna increase the interoperability between Lin Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Um, and really you know, today, this is a, a call to action uh, for all of us to help ensure that Linux remains a great choice for use in, on, in studio workstations. It's not about promoting Linux above any other operating system, um, but it is about advocating for it as an additional option. Uh, you know, commercial OS vendors uh, you know, will you know, optimize for the kind of the very broad market that they have. They, you know, they have you know, hundreds of millions of customers that, that, that license their software and, and buy their hardware, um, and they have many competing incentives. Um, you know, we have the opportunity as the visual effects and animation community to take you know, the customizability and flexibility of Linux and really target it for the very specific needs of visual effects and animation, which is our primary focus, but it's just a, a small niche for these big commercial closed source vendors. Um, it's, you know, this is also, it's not just about choice, it's also about interoperability. Um, you know, th this isn't just for uh, you know, the Linux fans, this really is an initiative for everybody. How do we make sure that, um, that Linux is an option, even for those who are primarily Windows, primarily Mac, you know, you know, who, who may be curious in, tr in trying Linux, how do we make it easier for them to do so? And we wanna hear from you, even if, even if you have no interest or you know, you have no, you're not using Linux right now, you know, we wanna hear from you, like what, what, what's standing in your way? What are the barriers to adoption? So let's talk about a bit of history. Uh, more kind of recent history. I mean, the use of Linux you know, in the industry goes back to the late 90s when we needed a replacement for IRIX uh, from moving away from Silicon Graphics. But, but specifically, the, you know, the last couple of years, back at the end of 2020 in December, there was a big decision uh, from uh, the CentOS project and, and Red Hat to pivot away, uh, to pivot the CentOS project away from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream. CentOS Linux is a widely used Linux distribution uh, uh, you know, across the world, but specifically in visual effects and animation as well. Uh, and, uh, and CentOS Stream is a new kind of Linux distribution uh, that, that is great, but it, it doesn't meet necessarily the same needs and not necessarily suitable for a studio environment in, to use in the same way. So this was a, an unexpected and a slightly unwelcome announcement, I would, I would say, uh, and it caused a little bit of a, of a reaction in the, in the community. Um, and you know, through last year, there was lots of great discussions about what, what do we do about this? Uh, this time last year, uh, the VFX reference platform, Birds of a Feather, the community came together and, and kind of there's broad consensus that it's time for kind of collective action. If we let every studio just make an independent decision about what to do next, it's actually gonna be detrimental to all of us. Um, so collective action is needed, but it wasn't clear what the action, uh, what the action needed was. Um, we didn't really understand, you know, well, what's happening in, across our community. So uh, back in October, the Visual Effects Society Tech Committee announced and launched the Studio Platform Survey, which is a survey that, the, that went out uh, to the whole community. Um, we published the results in January of this year. If you haven't seen it yet, the, the link's up on the screen there. And there's a link to it again on, on vfxplatform.com as well. And 
Uh, and so, uh, and, and this had some great insights about what's really going on. And we'll, we'll get into some of those insights and sh share just some highlights of those results. And that really spurred like, okay, like, like action is urgently needed. We better understand what, is, what, what needs to happen. Uh, and we launched a VFX Linux task force with a very specific goal. Um, and uh, that end goal was, uh, ends up in this presentation today. So I'll talk more about that shortly. Um, and yes, that's where, that's where we are today, uh, making, making the recommendations from the VFX Linux task force. So let's talk about some of the survey results. Um, you know, one of the big questions we asked is, uh, is you know, for studios, what, um, what is primary operating system you install on workstations? Uh, so this is a proportion of workstations represented by the studios that responded. And we can see like Linux is representing you know, over half, like 60% of those, of those workstations. So that's a significant majority of kind of market share. But you know, maybe that's a historical artifact. Maybe it's, it's reducing, you know? So we, we also asked the question, for each of the major operating systems, are you, ex are you expecting usage to, uh, to increase, decrease, or stay the same? And there's a, there's a lot, lot on this uh, chart here, but um, the, the key takeaway from here is, is that actually studios most, see most increase, or anticipate most increase with Linux, and actually the smallest decrease with Linux. So not only does Linux have the, the majority market share, uh, it's actually, you know, studios are anticipating it growing e even further. So, uh, so Linux isn't going anywhere. And uh, you know, a, a bit of an aside for that, for those of you who maybe uh, you know, don't come from a studio environment or a studio that uses Linux, like why is Linux such a big deal? Um, th there's lots of very specific reasons, but uh, I'll go through a few of them. Um, flexibility is, is the first one. You know, a large open source community and a huge code, a huge library of code available uh, provides so many choices. Uh, plus the opportunity to customize Linux to meet the specific needs in a way that's not possible with a commercial operating system. Um, vendor independence is, is a huge one. You know, the, the open source nature of Linux means you can avoid being locked into hardware product life or hardware product life cycles with software enforced obsolescence. Uh, performance, uh, full access to the, the Linux kernel really means you can tune performance for the specific workloads and needs of uh, visual effects and animation, like you know, rendering and simulation or specific, specific kind of uh, animation performance. Uh, supportability. Um, with Linux, it's possible to, to access, you have access to the entire source code. So you can potentially, if you have the expertise, you have access to expertise, you can fix any problem uh, yourselves without being reliant on a third party vendor. And the studios have to move at the speed of production. Uh, and, and, and as many of us know, sometimes there are many great vendors and partners in our community, not all of them can, can operate at that same speed of production. So um, that supportability is a, is a big piece of why Linux is an advantage. Uh, licensing, obviously, you know, you know, Linux is open source, therefore it's, it's free as in the, the, there's, no, there's no licensing cost. Um, so that option of no cost, you know, avoiding the complexity of license management as well, and the constraints around license management that, that, that can get in the way of scaling up at short notice for production needs, particularly when sort of burst scaling to the cloud is a big one. And then and one that people don't think about too much, which, which, I, which I think is, is, a, is a big one, is talent. You know, um, the use of Linux attracts talented engineers uh, and developers who tend towards deep technical expertise and knowledge, and they bring that uh, highly beneficial innovation and advocacy to our community. Um, so I, I think we have, we have, you know, some of the reason we have some such great engineering talent in our industry is because, you know, uh, we, we use a lot of Linux. So that's a, a bit of an aside. Let's get back to the, the survey results. Uh, let's dive into those, those, those studios using Linux. Uh, now this is proportion of studios responding, not proportion of workstations. But we asked, you know, what distribution have you been deploying on workstations last year? Now, because the almost three quarters are deploying CentOS last year, and CentOS is going away. So CentOS goes ends of CentOS Linux seven goes end of life uh, June twenty twenty four, and so and there's a, there's, a, there's a few others we've been to in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, so well, what were they, what are they planning on doing next? So we asked, this is again, this is kind of November time last year, you know, what are you anticipating doing next year and deploying next year? Uh, and we, here we can see a real mix, but um, over half uh, undecided, oh, not, sorry, just under half uh, are kind of undecided, don't know, don't know what we're gonna do. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, just, just over 20% planning on staying with CentOS Linux for now, but that's not really a sustainable option. Uh, and then, and then there's a whole mix of like other, other distributions coming into the mix there. So clearly the decision needs to be made and, uh, and studios, you know, how, how soon do people want, want to do that? 
we ask, well, for CentOS Linux users, when do you when do you plan to make that decision? And we can see the majority of people are planning on making that decision this year. You know, some next year, some 2024, but 2024 is too late. You know, it's, it's you, you need to decide before then. So there really is a, a degree of urgency around this, and the kind of the existential threat here is the risk of fragmentation. Right? If every studio independently goes and chooses what, what they're going to do, if every software vendor independently goes and chooses what, what Linux distribution they're going to support, um, we're going to see a proliferation of different distributions around the community. And uh, while it's all Linux, every distribution does have its, its own idiosyncrasies. And when we're talking about high-end digital content creation software, um, there, are you know, there, there are specific compatibility issues with every distribution. The challenge for software vendors in our community is if they see their customers on a wide variety of different Linux distributions, it makes their build and support overhead a lot higher. And so that could dissuade, and number one, it could dis it dissuade software vendors who don't currently support Linux. It makes it too complex for them to do so. Uh, and for those who currently do, but maybe on the knife edge, because because it, it's because the costs are high already because of some of these issues, um, you know, so they you know, they may decide to 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 withdraw Linux support for their products. Uh, and if that happens, then studios will be forced to withdraw because they need to use those products. And so then we end up in a situation where even though stu studios want to use Linux, they're not able to because the software is not available. And it's a, clearly an undesirable situation. That's the thing we're trying to avoid, and that's where the VFX Linux task force comes in. Um, so this was really created in response to the, the studio platform survey launched by the VES Tech Committee uh, in March and with a very specific goal. By August, by like 9.05 this morning, uh, uh, recommend which Linux distribution studios should align on. Uh, it, the, the, the task force was made up of uh, 10 technology engineers and, and lead engineers, uh, sorry, technology leaders and lead engineers from a mix of small, mid and large uh, visual effects and animation studios, some of which were Windows shops, not, not all Linux shops. We wanted to get a cross section of, of people from across the industry. Uh, and we met uh, you know, at least weekly with uh, a whole variety of Linux distribution vendors, software vendors, other people from studios, um, just to really get a perspective of what's going on and, and understand what the options are. So I won't talk too much about that process, but I do want to talk about kind of, you know, clearly we have to assess a, a, a bunch of different distributions. Uh, and we, we, we had a limited amount of time. Uh, and so we had to we had to kind of limit the scope of our of our of which Linux distributions we were going to assess. There's hundreds of them out there, uh, and so we applied two criteria for this. Uh, firstly, we only wanted to assess uh, the Linux distributions that were represented in the 2021 Studio Platform Survey report, i.e., distributions that have already proven in a studio environment. And that's because, number one, it lowers the risk. Obviously, we know it works in a studio environment, but also because there's expertise and experience in the industry already. Uh, and, uh, and so it's kind of, it's, it's something of a known quantity. And because of the time constraint that we have to, to make a migration, you know, that, it, it, that's, a, that's a major factor. Um, and it's also something that hopefully software, some of the software vendors are, are familiar with too. Um, then uh, the, the second criteria is the, and there's a few aspects to this, but it's, the, the ability to pay, like, the, so the op and it's an optional thing, but, but some studios, some vendors want to be able to pay to secure additional services or commitments. And those things like, well, maybe, maybe you want to pay for additional technical support resources. You don't necessarily have, you know, as, as much Linux engineering in-house, or you, 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 know, you know, you want to be able to financially contribute to uh, the open source ecosystem. You want to be able to, um, you know, be able to have a stake and, you know, pay, pay the, 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 uh, uh, the vendor of a Linux distribution, so you can have some influence over the product roadmap to address industry-specific requirements. You know, and studios do that. That benefits all of us, right? If there's a, if there's a studio influencing, you know, Red Hat or Ubuntu to be, to to become more, um, uh, you know, to, to better meet the needs of visual effects and animation workstations and artists. Uh, and another one, which is increasingly important, I would say, is like is securing additional legal obligations and accountability. You know, in this day and age with, with security risks such as they are, you know, making a Linux distribution is very complicated. There's a, very, there's a complex supply, upstream uh, supply chain. And so you want to make sure there's really strong governance and accountability around that to prevent supply chain attacks. Uh, and and when you, uh, if you, you know, some organizations that want to pay for a contract with a distribution vendor, uh, they can secure additional legal commitments and protections and, and accountability around that. So when we apply uh, these criteria, we end up with 
uh, with three actually uh, 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 distributions, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Rocky Linux, and Ubuntu. We added Alma Linux as an additional one. Uh, and the reason we did that was because essentially Alma Linux and, and Rocky Linux are sort of uh, are compatible. Uh, the, you know, anything that built, built on one should run on the other. Uh, and both of them are relatively new. They've been kind of created in the wake of this decision that CentOS Linux is going away. And, and, and so uh, we wanted to kind of mitigate the risk of just looking at, at Rocky Linux and saying, hey, it's not much, it's not much additional overhead to, uh, to evaluate uh, and assess uh, Alma Linux as well. And so the task force made the decision to kind of add that one into the mix too. So those are the four distributions that, that we looked at. And, uh, but before we get into that, um, uh, I, three of those distributions, so Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Rocky Linux, and Alma Linux are closely related. And I just want to take a moment to kind of quickly go through what that ecosystem looks like and you know, how they are related. So a Linux distribution starts with a collection of open source projects. There are millions of open source projects out in the world, each, uh, uh, each kind of fully autonomous, has their own goals. Uh, and then a Linux distribution you know, just, it takes a selection of those, bundles them together along with the Linux kernel and creates a functional Linux distribution. And uh, with, in the Red Hat ecosystem, that starts with Fedora Linux. Fedora Linux is, uh, there's a release every six months. It's the kind of, it has the latest and greatest uh, releases of, uh, you know, of, of things taken from the open source community. Uh, and, and so you know you're going to get the latest stuff. We also know that like, it's not necessarily battle tested. Uh, you get some fragility with that. There may be compatibility issues, performance issues, stability issues, um, but that's the price you pay for, for really getting access to the latest stuff. Um, then downstream from Fedora Linux, this is where we now have CentOS Stream, a, a new distribution. And this is you know, frequently you know, uh, updated uh, from Fedora with you know, as things are proven out, as things are tested, um, it's it, you know it, it kind of it, they can stabilize and they start landing in CentOS Stream, uh, and CentOS Stream you can think of it as like this is the the preview release of or, or the beta the, the beta or beta depending on where you're from uh, of uh, where Red Hat of the next Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, minor release. Uh, so CentOS Stream is next, constantly updated, uh, and then you get Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, is released uh, major release every three years now. It used to be every four. It moves faster these days. Every, every three years, minor release every six months. Um, it's fully battle tested. It's a production operating system. It's, uh, it's stable. Uh, it's well supported. Um, it's also not free. It's, uh, you know, to, to, to use to Enterprise Linux, you have to pay for a subscription. The software is open source, but the, 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 the way that you, the, the, the Red Hat is uh, a licensed distribution is you, you pay for a subscription. And you get all kinds of uh, uh, additional services and access to tools and products around that that, that, that that are beneficial, but not but not everyone wants to wants to pay for Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription across all of their uh, their, their, their their fleet of uh, servers and workstations and render nodes. Um, and so there's another option, and this is where CentOS Linux uh, used to play. There are these downstream distributions, uh, rebuild distributions, uh, uh, they're often known as. Um, this is where Alma Linux and Rocky Linux come in. CentOS Linux was one of these two. Essentially, what, you know, because the software is open source, uh, you can take a Red Hat Enterprise Linux release. You can remove all the trademark logos and, uh, and names and, and, and all that kind of thing. And then you can rebuild uh, the, the distribution. And, that's, and, so, and you get something that is fully bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Software built on one will, will, will run on the other, um, but it's open source, it's free. Uh, um, uh, CentOS Linux uh, did this, but it, you know, CentOS Linux it, at times it, it did well, so, so at times it kind of fell behind, and sometimes you'd have to wait six months for a CentOS Linux release to follow Red Enterprise Linux release. Both uh, the, the Alma Linux Foundation and the, and, the, and the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation have learned a lot from the CentOS experience, and they both actually recently released uh, new build systems that where they both target that being able to do a release um, of uh, Alma or Rocky within a day or two of, Red, of a uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux release. Still a latency of a day or two. And so for some people with critical software updates, maybe that's an issue, but um, it's still much faster than CentOS Linux was. So hopefully that gives an understanding of the, the, the ecosystem. Um, I'm now going to completely gloss over uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of uh, assessment that we did uh, around uh, different Linux distributions um, and uh, jump straight to the, the, the recommendation um, 
and there's a lot to this. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read it, and then uh, I'm gonna break it down. So don't so don't worry about trying to grok it all now, um, and, and, and we'll we'll go through it. So. Uh, for artist workstations running Linux, it is strongly recommended that all VFX and animation studios deploy Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 or one of its binary compatible rebuild distributions such as Alma Linux 9 or Rocky Linux 9 in 2023 and no later than June 2024 for those still run running CentOS Linux 7. And then digital content creation software vendors are encouraged to build their products on at least RHEL 8 or its downstream equivalent and qualify all minor releases of RHEL 9 as being officially supported for their customers in 2023. Okay, so first of all, like why are we recommending alignment on a single set of distributions? Um, uh, and, you know, rather than letting people cho choose what they want to do, well, we kind of covered that already, but it, you know, it's, it's really, well, freedom of choice is really important in the open source and the Linux ecosystem. At this time for the visual effects and animation community, given where we are, we think it's in everyone's best interests to, to consolidate on a, on a single set of compatible Linux distributions uh, to really make it easier to adopt and support uh, Linux for the, for the kinds of use cases that we have. Um, you know, why Red Hat Enterprise Linux? Um, I'll, I'll just take on slide. At the end of this, I'm going to share a link to a 30-page report that has all the details for all of this and, and goes into a lot of reasons why we made this selection. The, the main one, the main factor that, that came into this is like, we only have a limited time window to, to make this change. And, and what we heard from several studios and key software vendors was like, it's not enough time to move to a completely new distribution. Uh, we have expertise, we have tooling, build tooling and, uh, uh, and deployment tooling. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and while other, there are other uh, Linux distributions are great and offer some compelling advantages, none were compelling enough to, over, to, 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 make, to, to make it uh, worthwhile changing something that, that very different to what the majority currently use. So that, 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 that's why, and then also we're recommending a collection of distributions because that helps us be less dependent on one single organization. I mean, yes, of course, we're, you know, Red Hat and owned by IBM is at the center of this. It's a very successful, sustainable business right now, but also like the, 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 there is the Alm Linux Foundation, the Rocky Enterprise Foundation, they're well backed by, uh, by cloud service providers and, and others. And so there is, we're, not we're not completely dependent on one organization. So let's break this down a little bit more. Uh, so the first bit here, the artist workstations, we went with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, uh, although it's only just been released uh, you know, uh, two, three months ago. Um, uh, we went with that because uh, you know, so Red Hat Enterprise Linux has a 10 year life cycle. It gets five years of uh, a feature updates and then five years in maintenance mode. And Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux 8, and therefore Alma 8 and Rocky 8, uh, when I say RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I'm, I'm, I mean those as well in most cases. Um, they uh, so that is reaching its maintenance mode in the next in the next year or so. So it doesn't seem prudent for all studios to go all through the effort of moving to a new distribution, doing an upgrade, only to be stuck in maintenance mode for five years. So um, so the, uh, you know the, the thought was hey, we, if we should move to nine as a as a community together, do that push, um, and it has some very compelling advantages, which I'm happy to talk about too. And there's performance advantages and new, new software versions. Um, and the time scale of doing that is really, it's not right. We're not saying, hey, deploy it, like go back and deploy it right now. It's over the next kind of 12 to 18 months. Um, and during that time, there's going to be two or three minor releases of, of, of RHEL and Rocky and Armour as well. And certainly if you use CentOS Linux, you've got to be off that by June at the latest of 2024, uh, because it, it, there, there will be no critical security issues will come up and there will be no updates. And so you do not want to be on that operating system. Um, the second part here is around software vendors. Now, because of course we're dependent on the studios, we're dependent on software vendors to create their products in a way that can be supported on, uh, on, on specific operating systems. And so, so we, 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 there's two aspects to this. We're recommending they build on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Alma or Rocky 8, uh, and that they're qualifying and they're supporting their customers running nine. The reason for, for building on eight is that uh, eight uses an older version of glibc, uh, and when you build, so when you build software on that, it, it will work on a wider, wider range of, of Linux distributions. And that's important to the software vendors because not all their customers are in the visual, visual effects and animation community. They're not all going to be taking this leap to, to, uh, to RHEL 9. Um, and so, uh, and so moving eight means they can still build things that will, will work on older distributions as well. Um, 
and and there's tooling that allows them to build in a way that will that will uh, make an iron work no problem at all and then we're asking we're asking software vendors to please if for, for visual effects animation products please support all minor releases of rel 9 uh, or rocky 9 or armor 9 uh, and you know saying look hey th these distributions are equivalent so you can support all of them um and uh you know the days of being able to say hey my product only works you know our product only works on uh, you know on uh rocky 8.2 like that it's it's kind of that's kind of useless because uh you know, it, it, you know with minor releases every six months and the need to keep up with security updates you know it's too small a window to be useful it, we, we really need software vendors on, for linux to support a wide a range of minor releases including latest so we're free to deploy uh, uh, security updates. So that's that's the recommendation. Um, uh, you know, as like I said, I mean, there there are benefits to other distributions, uh, but they really you know they weren't quite compelling enough for us to make the change right now. But I do want to do a special shout out to Ubuntu, which is the other one that we assessed and didn't make the recommendation. Uh, it's an excellent Linux distribution. Um, uh, we were all really impressed with it, and 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 all felt like slightly disappointed. We weren't able to recommend that too. So it is a secondary recommendation of the Linux Task Force that uh, once we've got through these primary recommendations, that software vendors should consider also supporting Ubuntu in addition to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm pleased to say actually that actually all the Linux the Linux distribution uh, vendors have been great at engaging with us we've, we've met with them multiple times uh, canonical are, are here today so put, put your hands up but I think there's, there's a few there's, a, there's engineering and product managers and day run sales so uh, feel free to grab them you can find out more about them and they're now they're now members of the Academy Software Foundation and I'm hoping maybe the other Linux distribution vendors will get more involved with our community too uh, certainly um, the, uh, Bob Davis, who's the uh, pr uh, principal product manager for Workstation for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, has been very involved in our community for, for the last couple of years. So we have really great engagement there. Okay, so that's that's the recommendation, but it's like the future. Like, is it, we're just choosing Linux distribution. Like, wh what's beyond that? Um, so let, let's talk about some longer term goals. Um, you know, you know, ultimately, you know, the unwelcome demise and surprise decision about CentOS Linux going away, it could end up being a, you know, actually a catalyst for galvanizing more community action uh, to make Linux, you know, the foundation for the premier VFX Linux experience. So, uh, you know, the, the, it could end up being a, a, a great thing for us. Um, and, and really, you know, what we see the opportunity here is, you know, increasing support for Linux from more digital content creation tools. Um, Increasing Linux adoption by studios that mostly use Windows or, or Mac OS. Uh, increased platform innovation driven by cross-studio collaboration. You know, so much of, of the systems and sort of platform level uh, innovation that happens, happens in the silos of our individual studios. And there's the scope for us to collaborate and share a lot more, you know, in, in using the same kind of principles as the kind of the, as open source software. Um, and, and I think we, we would all benefit from that. Uh, and ultimately, we think we, you, you know, we want to get to the point where Linux provides the best artist experience for professional graphics workstations because of our, our ability to tailor it in a way that we can't do with commercial closed source operating systems. Um, and then uh, and then ultimately, we want to secure the future of Linux as a sustainable, healthy platform for studio workstations. So that's that's where we uh this is what we believe the opportunity is but it needs collective community action and engagement so that's the plea today and there's some specific next steps for uh for, for what we think we need to do um i'll share the, the report link in a minute so please share the report share the news share the recommendation share what we're talking today um uh obviously there's a recommendation so all studios deploying linux workstations to start planning for the deployment of rel 9 or rocky 9 or, or alma 9 um uh all uh, software vendors uh of digital co content creation software vendors to plan to build their products on at least rel 8 and support rel 9 uh you know all the downstream equivalents um and so th those are the big ones so you follow the recommendations please that's you know that's that's the plea but beyond that, we, we would invite the Academy Software Foundation and the VS Tech Committee um, to collaborate on the creation of a workstation experience working group tasked with creating a layer of configuration and packages that enables a best in class artist experience on Linux workstations. How do we build on this Linux distribution to really, really make a, a, a premier artist experience? 
Um, and also to create a community forum and knowledge base to curate and share know-how for how to adopt and maintain Linux in the studio environment and for how to port software to Linux to help those software vendors who don't yet support Linux. Um, you know, delivery of a layer on top of like the recommended distribution needs, it needs a lot of leadership and needs, needs, needs a lot of expertise and coordination. And, you know, and there are you know, Microsoft and, and, and Apple do a great job with this. You know, Apple has their pro workflow group. I know there's people from that group today and they do, they do a great job and, uh, you know, and, and it's very beneficial to our community that, that they do that, but ultimately they're feeding into this kind of big kind of Mac OS product that's very, that's very broad uh, and trying to service many needs. And, and specifically Linux gives us opportunity to have a similar kind of effort, but really focused and really the ability to kind of tailor something to, to, to our specific needs. Um, and it's really only through kind of community action that we're going to lower the barrier to adoption and uh, and support of Linux in studios and software vendors, and and really, I mean, to close things out. In summary, uh, we see these next steps delivering a real progress towards creating a more robust, sustainable workstation platform that offers the best choice for a studio to offer the premier us experience uh, and the preferred deployment platform for high-end digital content creation tool providers. So, with that. Um, with it, there's the report. So you can go, uh, as of this, about an hour ago, uh, we now have a new page on the VFX platform site. Uh, it's not a work of art, but it's functional. Uh, uh, VFXplatform.com slash Linux. And from there, it, it, there's a link there to our 30 page report. Uh, so uh, you know, get yourself a cup of coffee and sit down. And uh, it, has, you know, it goes through everything that, we, that I've talked about today in, in a lot more detail. We have a Linux workstations channel on Slack if you want to ask questions. Hopefully we have some time for Q&A now, but um, uh, if you want to carry on the conversation afterwards on the AS AWS Slack, there's a, there's a channel there for that. Uh, and, and finally, I just wanted to say a big thank you because really this has been a community effort. I'm standing up here today, but really representing the work of, of many people. It's a huge thank you to the ASWF for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, inviting us to come and speak today uh, and for their engagement with this too. Um, uh, and I won't, won't name them all, but we've had great participation from, uh, from all these uh, organizations mentioned here. And I want to give a specific, you know, specifically give a shout out to the other nine members of the VFX Linux task force who've done a fantastic job, or, you know, under severe time constraints to do all this work and assessment and write up this report. So, um, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll hand it for any questions. Uh, I, so first of all, massive thank you for doing this. It's hugely appreciated. Um, but a quick question. What's the feedback been from the software vendors so far? Are they kind of committing to to go along with your recommendations or is it too early to, to say? I think, uh, I mean, so, so far they, they've been, uh, they've been along the ride for this, for the, for this process. And, uh, and I, and I think, you know, their, their, their understanding of, of the recommendation and they're kind of, uh, you know, I think the people we've been speaking to have kind of uh, uh, but, uh, bought into it and they agree, but they have work to do within the organizations to secure, to secure the support. So I think it would be very powerful for their customers to tell them that these recommendations are important. So I would encourage you, if you think these recommendations are worth following, please let your, please let, you know, Autodesk, Foundry, uh, you know, Clarice, uh, you know, Side Effects, all, 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 you know, Adobe, uh, uh, Epic. I mean, I have to say, we, we, did, we did meet with uh, Epic Games and, uh, and you should talk, they have a great roadmap for Linux support and they've been doing some excellent work in this space. So, um, so look, I, I think all the engagement has been really positive. But, um, but yes, it, it does, need, uh, does need some more encouragement from the community. So please help us by doing that. We have, um, we have one question here from the Zoom chat around, uh, which is that question I had as well. What about desktop environment recommendations or even like toolkits and stuff like that because Qt, GTK, and then things like Snap and flat packs and things like that. Was there any um, thoughts on that at this point or is that to come? Yeah, pl pl plenty of thoughts. That we, we try to really constrain uh, the, the scope to talking about distribution. And I think that workstation experience working group that we're talking about, I think that, you know, that's the form for them really like, okay, how do we build on this distribution? What do we think about desktop environments? What do we think about, uh, you know, uh, software distribution methods and snap and uh, versus other ways of doing things? Uh, what about kind of license management and other things that came up? I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of uh, of things there, so I think it's one step at a time. This is a this is a kind of a, a long term path 
it needs kind of sustained action over time. But, but you know, we, we had the urgent need, like with the Centos Linux, it's kind of really, you know, kicked us up our collective butts to kind of get going. Um, and uh, and di the distribution was the first piece, so. Thank you. Um, did you reach consensus easily or are you expecting dissent from <laughs> the community? <laughs> Uh, we reach consensus relatively easily. Uh, I think we always expect dissent from the community, particularly when it comes to things like uh, uh, operating systems and that kind of thing, because people can get quite religious about it. But actually, so far, there's been uh, uh, an almost alarming lack of pitchforks. Uh, so, uh, so yes, I was expecting some. So, but but no, I, I think honestly, I think when when you walk people through the logic of why we are where we are. Uh, and and the specific needs of, of this community, I think you know, people are understanding. So, uh, so no, there's been it's been really sort of universal buy-in so far. If you don't feel that way, I'm keen to, I'm keen to hear. Hi, um, I wanted to ask, when do you think it would be a good fit for a studio to choose Red Hat over the free alternatives? Um, well, I, I, I think, and you speak, so I think Red Hat Enterprise Linux is, is great, as is Rocky Linux and Armour Linux. They, they, they all, they all, uh, they're all great options um, uh, in terms of for the, for the recommendation immediately. Uh, and by the way, I didn't mention it, but both Rocky and, uh, and, and with Armour Linux, you can also pay for support and other services too. It's one of the, one of the reasons they're on there. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Realm 9.0, it was released uh, like two months ago, and, uh, or maybe not even that. Um, and we, you know, I, I can tell you like a Disney animation, we've, we've already got some test deployments going. Um, so I, I would say over the next year, yeah, start doing it soon. I mean, and, and, and Red Hat is certainly listening. Actually, the one thing I didn't mention as well, which, which is in the report is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know I think that, that there's great advantage. I think, you know, it's clearly people can use the free rebuild distributions and there's, lo there's lots of advantages to doing that. There are, collect there are individual and collective advantages to more studios paying into the community for Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscriptions. Uh, Red Hat committing to making that easier. There's in, in, the, in the report, um, there's a specific email address they've created for visual effects and animation. They have committed to giving us favorable discounts, particularly small and medium, medium sized studios. Um, and I won't quote the numbers that they've given, but they're very generous discounts are available. So, so if you're thinking about Red Hat and uh, 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 subscriptions and you look at the website and see the pricing, you think, oh, that's a lot. Then if we could speak to them, contact them on that email address, you know, they, they, they're very keen to kind of, to, to help work with us and help us out. Yeah. So, but I, I would say this, the sooner the better. I'm going to throw you a softball. What about Wayland? What about Wayland? So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm gonna, it's, I actually bumped into Mark Hills yesterday. So some of you may know Mark, he used to run the render farming birds of a feather. And he asked me a question in 2014, what about Wayland? What's that gonna do? And that's really kind of, that, that really inspired this path to kind of where we got here today. Um, so for those who don't know, Wayland is the next generation kind of display system for Linux. Um, uh, it's uh, replacing X, which is very long in the tooth and uh, is no longer really actively maintained. It probably has a still a few, few years left in it. Um, but, we, but you know, Wayland needs to be, it, it needs more sort of high-end features. Uh, it needs, you know, HDR support and color management support and, and a whole bunch of things. And, you know, the, the community has been listening. Red Hat specifically listened. They've been hiring engineers specifically for Wayland to work on some of these features because they've been, they've been listening. And again, it just shows the, the advantage of being able to engage. I know that we have uh you know oliver here who's the product manager for ubuntu desktop who's kind of who can uh who can go and take feedback back to the to, to the engineers too so um uh, you know i think it's still a few years out for us to really be able to run like high-end complex digital content creation 3d accelerated software on, on wayland but it's it, but it, you know we need to we need to be doing the work now to get there before x falls apart on us we had one other question from the uh, Zoom chat come in, and uh, I, I recognize a little bit of this question is probably going to be directed um, to them checking out the websites. But in the in the context of how you all looked at it as a committee, did you notice any noteworthy differences between Alma Linux and Rocky Linux Linux in terms of how you would expect this industry to use it? Uh, uh, not, not really. No, I mean, I, I think. I mean, there's, there's differences when you read the report. There's differences in the governance structure, which may or may not matter to you. Um, there has been, you know, the the the, the release of Rocky Linux 9.0 took took a while, took longer uh, than Alma Linux uh, 9.0. 
but uh, that's because they were doing this the Peridot, which is their, their new cloud native build system. Um, uh, and so that was kind of a one time thing. So uh, it's still early days for both operating systems, but, but uh, yeah, very impressed with both. Um, uh, you know, they're approaching things in different ways, but functionally, the, you know, the software that they're delivering is a one for one, like bug for bug compatible, you know, uh, 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 version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux with different naming and branding and built with a different build system. But essentially, you know, they're equivalent. You, you, I, I, maybe I would, I would encourage people to, I mean, you know, I won't say they're, they're identical. You people should reach out to the communities and, and, and ask the community's opinions on that. And, you know, you, they can speak to, uh, to, to, the, to the people behind Rocky or people behind Alma. Um, you know, the community manager, you know, uh, uh, for, for Alma Linux, Jack has been very engaged. I'm sure he'll, you know, if there's, uh, if there's discussion, he'll, he'll get involved. And likewise, uh, Greg Kurtz uh, and, and Robert Adolph, who uh, kind, of, uh, kind of lead the, uh, the main sponsor behind Rocky Linux, uh, also been very engaged with us too. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.